Oh gosh, the year is coming to a close, everybody, and what a year it was. But despite all the fun we had this year, I think for the most part, it stayed relatively more of the same. You know, false copyright strikes, and the internet playing the game that everybody's come to love, Everybody Hates Hitler. Wait, what the fuck? That doesn't sound right. Let me, let me read the script. Okay, that was a typo. It's Everybody I Hate is Hitler. There we go. We'll move past that. But if what I've been seeing is to be believed, well, it looks like some of those good times are not going to keep rolling past 2020. And folks, this is not even going to begin discussing COPPA. We have other fish to fry on today's docket. No, this is talking about the TOS changes here on YouTube, as well as some of the TOS changes on Twitter. And you know what that means, folks. We gotta fire up the transition slides. Come gather around people wherever you roam. And admit that the waters around you have grown. Now, YouTube's Terms of Service were updated very recently, but we're going to focus on one major update, which is to harassment or cyberbullying. Now, for the sake of brevity, I've got on screen what they define as harassment. And as you can also see, there are a few lists of notable exceptions. However, that is completely irrelevant. The fact of the matter is, inside of this entire collegiate dissertation of legalese jargon, there is nothing that is 100% clearly defined. Everything has shades of gray, and everything is far too vague for creators to fully understand and to abide by these. I mean, sure, maybe I call somebody retarded, and sure, I can understand if I knew they were mentally retarded, and I said that to them in an insulting manner, that would clearly be harassment. But if I call somebody an inbred dumb fuck, and I have no idea if they actually are an inbred dumb fuck. Am I suddenly going to get hit with harassment because they're a protected member of some kind of class that I had no way of being aware of? I have no way of knowing beforehand whether or not somebody was the product of an incestuous relationship or was a victim of such things. So if I call somebody an inbred dumb fuck, it's possible that I'm just trying to be a little bit of a jerk while I'm criticizing them, being an asshole with a point, not necessarily trying to attack a victim of something beyond their control. Now the question is, does that open me up to the defense of this is scripted satire? Well, maybe, but maybe not. The reality is, this is all way too fucking vague to have a clear understanding. As a matter of fact, let's take this one a little bit further. A lot of people like calling others Nazis these days if they think they're bigots. Are you suddenly now going to get your video removed if you call somebody a Nazi? Because you're doing it to target them for something. I mean, this, this is not well defined whatsoever, and this is an issue. This needs to be clearly defined so the creators can easily abide by these new rules. I mean, for the love of God, if I call someone like Kaino a pedophile, somebody who has self-proclaimed that they are a minor attracted person, am I now targeting somebody for something beyond their control? If I make fun of a zoophile for being attracted to animals and wanting to fuck them, am I going to get hit with some kind of community violation? And furthermore, if something like Caro the Wolf happens again, how the hell is anyone supposed to speak out about it and spread awareness if we have to watch our backs every single time we think of doing something like that? Seriously, this is just pissing on your creators and not even having the goddamn decency of calling it rain. And accepted that soon you'll be drenched to the bone If your time to you is worth saving Well, if your Johnnies weren't ruffled enough because of YouTube's changes, why don't we get into Twitter's? Now, you may recall recently how there were some people freaking out about TOS changes, thinking that it was going to be the end of NSFW content on Twitter, thinking it was going to go the exact same route that Tumblr did. Well, it turns out if you were thinking that, well, you're not really fucking wrong, are you? Now, many people were stating that to circumvent this, all you had to do was mark your account as something that posts sensitive content, and you would be totally fine. You would be free and clear. It turns out, if you read through their TOS a bit more, that just might not be the case. If you dig into their sensitive media policy and actually read through it, you can see three very clear examples of what may be in violation of their sensitive media policy. And wouldn't you know it, that third bullet point right there, accounts dedicated to posting sensitive content. Meaning if you are an NSFW account, if you typically post sensitive content, maybe you're an artist and you're an NSFW artist, Twitter's where you work, bully for you. Well, guess what? You're going to need to start branching out just a little bit more so not all of your content is sensitive media. Otherwise, you just might find your entire job has been suspended. 
And for that matter, considering the things you might have to start marking as sensitive content, such as things that can be considered hateful or harassing, you might want to, you know, not get too attached to accounts like the uh, Bra Moments account or Spicy Furry Takes, because if they have to continuously mark their content as sensitive, well, they're an account that is now subject to this sort of termination too. It's a little bit fucking ironic that a lot of the people who ran from Tumblr when Tumblr made this change went to Twitter, and now Twitter's deciding, well, fuck, we don't want any of them here either. So they're making the exact same fucking change. Wow, just, uh, wow, says a lot about our society. We need to, we need to start rising up. Then you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone For the times they are a-changing I'd just like to stress, gamers. I'm not fucking clairvoyant. I can't see the future. I don't have a magic crystal ball to tell you how everything will go. I am simply stating the worst-case possibilities of what can happen with these changes if they are not made clear to all of us that exist on these platforms. The fact that all of these changes are being left to interpretation leaves everybody at risk if anyone says anything negative, anything hurtful, in any context. If you've ever called someone an idiot, if you've called someone any sort of targeted insult, you just might be in violation of these kinds of, these kinds of rules right here. If you'd like some good advice, find the backup accounts on different platforms for your favorite artists, your favorite bloggers, your favorite YouTubers, everybody that you think you would miss if they were stricken off the internet. Because I assure you, it's only a matter of time. If all of this comes the way that I think it will, it's only a matter of time before everyone that you enjoy seeing on Twitter and on YouTube are no longer there and are no longer welcome on those platforms. We're going into the new decade, folks. And I don't exactly know what the future holds for all of us, but one thing that is very clear, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, and dudes of all teenagers, the times, well, they're a-changing. It's free real estate.